Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. Processing financial documents is a very strong use case for natural language processing and transformers. In fact, uh, most organizations in financial services and, and beyond need to work with a mountain of documents from company filings to analyst reports and more uh, in order to extract information, classify the documents, uh, run sentiment analysis and summarize documents, etc, etc. So there are really so many things you could do here. So in this video, I'm going to work with uh, company filings that I download from the uh, SEC website. And uh, we'll use a pretty cool SDK that I found to do this. And then uh, we'll process the filings and we will run a few transformer models, uh, namely summarization and um, emotion detection or sentiment analysis. Okay, so let's get started. So let's take a look at the raw material, the uh, documents. So starting on the SEC website, we go to filings and we select Edgar, which is the name of the database that includes company filings. And we could look for any particular company just to take a look maybe at one of those documents before we start uh, processing them. So why not pick Amazon? And uh, so we see different filing types, uh, 10K, which are the annual reports. 10Q quarterly reports and 8K current reports. And we'll be able to work with uh, all of these uh, in, in our example. So let's maybe take a look at the latest quarterly report. The structure of this document is, is well defined. Uh, the table of contents is always the same. So we'll find lots of financial information. Then we'll find this section called management discussion and analysis of financial condition and results of operation. And this is uh, usually very interesting because you get, you know, the uh, management's opinion on how things are going and, and they highlight, you know, stuff that's going well, stuff that's not going well, et cetera, et cetera. So for financial analysis, this is pretty, pretty interesting. And we'll, we'll take a look at this section again when we start uh, processing documents. Okay. So uh, you can go and have fun and find the, uh, uh, the information that you need here. Um, but of course, what we want to do is automate that process, download the documents, process them, extract the text sections that we're interested in and run transformer models on them. Um, and, and there is an API for, uh, for Edgar documents. Um, but as it turns out, um, I found recently, I should say that, um, some of my former colleagues uh, at AWS have actually built an SDK that lets you easily retrieve SEC filings and, uh, and break down those filings into different sections that we can save in a CSV file and, and, and process. So this is a huge time saver. I mean, personally, I'm not a big fan of uh, uh, you know, text processing and uh, regular expression. So, um, these people have done the heavy lifting for us. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll be happy to reuse uh, what you've built. Um, they, they've written also a couple of blog posts on um, uh, you know, the SDK and how to use it for different use cases. And, and the, the notebooks are actually integrated in SageMaker Jumpstart, um, which lets you easily deploy uh, machine learning solutions on SageMaker. So I'll put all the links uh, in the video description. And, uh, and you can go and read about it. And I'll just show you how to use the SDK. But yeah, thank you for building this. It's quite useful. And of course, this SDK is on GitHub. And it's called the Jumpstart Industry SDK, although it's only about uh, financial documents for now. But maybe we'll see other industries uh, integrated there. Okay. All right. So... That's what we're going to do. Grab some filings from the SEC website, process them with this SDK so that we get um, a data frame with uh, individual document sections in uh, different columns. And then we can apply some transformer magic to that. Okay, so let's get started. 
I've broken down my uh, my example in two notebooks. So the, the first notebook is uh, data prep. Okay, so downloading, processing, uh, and saving to CSV files. And the second notebook is about running transformers. Okay, makes it a little easier to keep track of everything. All right, here we go. So I include for reference the, the name of the jumpstart solution that I uh, grabbed some code from, and it's called Dashboarding SCC Text for Financial NLP. Okay, and again, that's the SDK we're using. So maybe let me zoom in a little bit. Um, so of course we need to install uh, the SageMaker SDK and uh, the uh, Jumpstart Industry SDK. Okay, so import them create some uh, uh, objects that we're going to need like uh, an s3 bucket to download filings and the uh, i am role for permissions i mean the usual stuff okay and next we can configure the uh downloading job so to speak and of course this is based on SageMaker, and uh, SageMaker users will uh, easily guess that this is based on SageMaker processing which is an easy way to run batch jobs on SageMaker. And it's really pretty easy to set up. So we need um, a bucket to store the process documents. So it's downloading the raw documents to one bucket, saving the process documents to another bucket. And uh, okay, this is the file name that we're gonna save the documents to. And the first step is to create this Edgar dataset config object. Uh, the first line here is which tickers or company IDs do we want to include? So here I'm only fetching um, Amazon documents. And these are the stock tickers, right? So uh, if you wanted uh, Google, you'd say, you know, Goog. And if you wanted Tesla, you'd have, uh, you know, TSLA, etc. Et and you can have as many as you want. Uh, form types. So here I'm uh, grabbing 10Ks and 10Qs. The SDK actually support other document types, and you'll find the information in the, the SDK, right? The the time range, so the start date, end date, so then I'm grabbing uh, all docs for 2019-2020, um, and this is just a, a, a bogus email that we need to uh, to retrieve documents okay uh, you don't need a you don't need a user account uh, by the way to go and grab Edgar documents although um, uh, throttling is a thing so you know don't don't expect that you can pull uh, you know two million documents in, in five minutes uh, and not being throttled okay so you have to be uh, considerate here um, okay so that's what we want to get uh, now that's the infrastructure setup Okay, and this is where you can tell it's based on SageMaker processing. So we'll run this on one ML C5 to Excel instance, which should be large enough. No problem here. Okay. And then we just launch that uh, data loading job. Okay. Uh, with, the, um, with the buckets, the file name to save everything to, and that's it, right? And so you run this and, you know, I hidden the log it, it runs for a little bit it's based on the uh, PySpark uh, which uh, SageMaker processing supports and uh, and funny enough the, the internal code name for this uh, was Gecko and if you if you've seen the movie Wall Street uh, with uh, Michael Douglas you know why okay so good uh, good name for this okay and Let's skip the log, which is really, really long. And so at the end of that job, um, I'm all I have is this CSV file in S3, okay? And so I can go and grab it, read it, and this is what I get, okay? So the ticker code, the form type, uh, some numbers and dates, uh, the text, so the full text of the filing, okay? and the uh, management discussion and analysis, uh, which is broken down as a separate section, because as I've said before, this is probably the most interesting part of the document. Now, 
if we want to go one step further, we can actually break down this text column into individual sections, right? So uh, going back to uh, going back to my uh, example here, let's go to the here to the contents. Okay, we want to break down every single item here as a separate column because we may want to run some analysis on that. And and this is where you know you really uh, I mean you. You really have to uh, like the fact that it's all done for you, right? Because you don't want to run those regular expressions. And so they've included that code in um, in a notebook, which is called um, SCC functions, whatever. So I, I cleaned it up a bit because it included other stuff that I didn't need for visualization, etc. But all that code is also uh, a part of the SageMaker Jumpstart solutions. So they extract all the items and you can see the... The regex here is, is pretty intense. Uh, good thing I didn't have to write that. Um, yeah, let's not uh, spend too much time on that. Basically, we'll just use those functions um, and map, you know, the, the the column names to to the to the uh, to the right names, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's all it's all done here, um, and this is the only bit that I uh, uh, wrote or adapted. Um, I just put together a simple function where I can pass a data frame with filings, the form type we want to uh, process, and then uh, just do everything automatically, right? And then it applies all that regex and, and returns a data frame with one section in each column, okay? So that's what we have for data prep. And the only thing we need to do, starting from this... Uh, Initial data frame is this, which is pretty nice. So just pass this data frame, say, hey, process all the 10K here. And then it returns another data frame. And now I can see in this data frame that the individual sections of the filing have been broken down into individual columns, which makes it easier to zoom in and uh, examine and, and process uh, particular particular things here, except of that huge blob of uh, of text. Okay, so I do the same for the 10Q filings, right? Um, yep. So it's a different data frame, different names, and then I just save those two process data frames to CSV files. Right? Simple enough. Okay. So now I've got my two files, right? I could, uh, yeah, I could open one of them, I guess. And we'll see exactly the same thing, right? All nicely broken down into uh, text sections. Perfect. So now we can move on to data processing. And, um, and the original uh, blog post um, uh, runs some... Uh, um, NLP functions on on the text, so you may wanna you may wanna read about that. Although um, um, it it feels more like uh, traditional um, statistics uh, and and not uh, there's no machine learning uh, at work. I think there's there's a bit of a hugging face summarization somewhere, but generally they're just using uh, traditional uh, techniques here. But still, um, and that's part of the SDK. So if you wanna go and compute. Those uh those scores those NLP scores yeah you can go and do that but I've I've ignored that bit okay uh, so I installed some dependencies uh, pandas of course I'm gonna need NLTK I'm gonna need to break down um, text sections into individual sentences and of course transformers for modeling okay fine so uh, this is the tokenizer I'm gonna use to break down um, text into individual sentences. I'm loading my two data frames. Or I should say I'm loading my two files in two data frames. Uh, here we just extracted very few documents uh, to keep the demo very short. You can go and extract much more, okay? So I have two 10Ks uh, because 2019, 2020, and I have six 10Qs because uh, there are three uh, quarters in between the, the 10Ks, right? For each year, makes sense. So, um, which model are we going to use here? So, um, and this is where you can start adapting my code, of course. So here I just figured, hey, let's do uh, uh, classification. So I'm going to analyze uh, individual sentences in the, uh, in the, the management uh, analysis section. 
and I'm going to keep uh, the most significant ones. So the ones that are either highly positive or highly negative um, and uh, ignore everything else. And then I'm going to concatenate all the positive sentences and summarize them and concatenate all the negative sentences and summarize them. OK, but again, you, you feel free to feel free to explore. Uh, you have this data frame. You can easily work with it. Uh, so for summarization, I'm going to use the T5 model, T5 base. And for classification, I've tried a couple of models. I've tried FinBert, which is, as the name implies, uh, a bird version uh, fine-tuned on financial documents. And it can do sentiment analysis with three classes. Uh, but I've, I've found that this one is also very interesting. Um, it's a distilled bird model fine-tuned on uh, emotion detection and it has a wider range anger disgust fear joy sadness surprise so and it, it does pick up uh it does pick up interesting things we, we'll uh we'll give it a we'll give it a go okay so just use a summarizer use a classifier and you can see i'm using the pipeline api from the transformers library so it's really one liner to go and grab the model okay and Here's how I'm going to process those docs. So I have the first function called find emotional sentences where I pass text section and it's going to tokenize that text section into sentences. OK, break it down into individual sentences. And then for each sentence, it's going to classify it. And if it's not neutral uh, and if the score is actually higher than a certain threshold. OK, so the the really negative ones or the really positive ones or the really angry ones maybe uh, I, i'm gonna keep okay and i just uh, append them to uh, uh to a list uh, stored in a, a dictionary right so i'll have a list for uh, positive sentences a list for negative sentences and so on so i'm just uh, grouping those okay and um and printing a summary and returning that dictionary. So that will return a dictionary with um, a list of sentences for each emotion, right? And then I have a summarization function where starting from that same dictionary, I just join all the sentences for each emotion and I summarize them and print the summary, okay? Just, you know, you, you, could, uh, you could elaborate on that. Uh, you could certainly improve this function here because if you concatenate um, many sentences that actually exceed um, the uh, the size, the max uh, sequence size of the model, then it gets trunc uh, truncated and you lose information. So um, if you want to chunk uh, this bit of text into, let's say, you know, 5, 12 tokens, that would certainly yield a better summary. Okay, exercise for the reader. Um, okay, so that's what we do here. So let's just try it. Um, and let's just start from, I uh, will take one of those 10 cues and point at the uh, management discussion section. And we'll try to find, let's run this. Uh, we'll uh, try to find the uh, non-neutral sentences with a score higher than 90, 0.95, okay? So we can see even this section is already quite long, right? It's already over 40K characters and 174 sentences. So that's a lot of text, right? Um, and I've got nine highly positive sentences and uh, nine highly negative sentences. Okay, so maybe we could just take a look at those, by the way. So why don't we do this? Let's look at the negative ones. Whoops. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, these assumptions about future disposition of inventory are inherently uncertain. Yeah, doesn't sound good. A liquidity is also affected by restricted cash balances, blah, blah, blah. Changes in foreign currency exchange rates impacted net sales by 814 millions. Okay, so these are all pretty negative things, okay? So now, uh, as I've said before, we're going to concatenate all the negative sentences, all the positive sentences, and we're going to summarize. So let's just go and run this. And here I'm running this on, uh, 
on a GPU uh, on a GPU instance uh, in uh, SageMaker Studio uh, because that will just run faster. Okay. Okay, and it's done. So the, the positive summary uh, is as we utilize our federal net operating losses and tax credit, we expect cash paid for taxes to increase. Uh, so you could argue if that's actually positive. Uh, yeah, they're using credits, which is probably good, but taxes increase, right? Nothing's free. AWS sales increased 37%. Okay, so I'm guessing that's good news. And the negative summary is change in foreign exchange rates impacted sales. Decrease in North America operating income is primarily due to increased marketing expenses. Ha <laughs> ha, marketing expenses. Increase in international operating loss is due to increase in marketing expense at sales. Okay, all right. So these are negative things. And you can control the, uh, the output, uh, of course, with the minimum length and the maximum length of, uh, of the summarizer. So that's okay. So now let's try the emotion detection model and see what it picks up. So just remove this one now. Okay. Just run this one, run this one. Yes. Yeah, this is a very high threshold with uh, six or seven emotions. So maybe I need to uh, lower it a little bit. Let's see what it picks up. Yeah, it didn't pick up much. So let's just say maybe point, I don't know, point seven. Is there any angry sentence in here? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, we have a lots of joyful sentences. Who thought? Who could have thought, you know, Amazon reports would be joyful? Interesting. Uh, yeah, let's look at the angry ones. Now I'm curious. We are also currently subject to tax controversies in various jurisdictions. Okay. Developments in an audit, investigation, or other tax controversy could have a material effect on our operating results. Okay, I, I will refrain from any comment here. Uh, but this is pretty funny, I think. Okay, um, so why don't we summarize that stuff and see what happens? Okay, uh, so summarizing anger. Yeah, we only have two sentences, so I'm guessing we'll uh, we'll see... Yeah, it does look like a summary. Tax controversy could have a material impact on our results. Yeah, it's actually not, not in here. Yeah, okay, so that's a good summary. Yeah, so joy, um, what do we have? Uh, so fear and joy and sadness. Okay, so see, we have, yeah, the input for fear is, a, is a higher than the maximum token uh, length for the model. So this is where, you know, we'd want to chunk that fear bit into uh, five, 12 blocks and summarize each one of them. But, you know, I didn't go that far. Okay, yeah, so joy, again, is probably too long to be properly summarized. And sadness gives us this guidance anticipates a non favorable impact of approximately 30 basis points for foreign exchange rates. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's the good one. That's a good one. That's definitely not a happy fact. Okay, so as you can see, you know, you need to tweak this a little bit and, and probably do a little, a little more processing on, on the text um, and, 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 you know, chunk it uh, uh, to, to get a, a better summary. But this isn't too bad, right, for just a few lines of code. So that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to show you today. So, you know, if you thought it was crazy difficult to go and, and build... Um, a solution that analyzes SSC filings. It's actually not. Uh, a lot of the, again, a lot of the heavy lifting is done by this uh, Jumpstart SDK. And then you get your CSV file and you can just grab models. Uh, and these are off the shelf. I didn't fine tune anything here uh, and just start processing that stuff, right? Um, and of course you could, uh, you could even train your own uh, language model on that, right? If you download enough, uh, enough data about it, uh, yeah, you could do that. I have to say it gets, it gets big really quickly. I've downloaded 
I think a full year of um, 10Ks and uh, 10Qs for all S&P 500 companies. So that's about, yeah, that's a few thousand documents and it's almost already a gigabyte of data, right? So if you want to go back in time and download, I don't know, 20 years, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a long download, which you probably need to break into different jobs because you'll be throttled. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be a lot of data, but yeah, this data is out there. You can process it very easily. And so you can build uh, pretty cool models. Maybe we'll see uh, more financial models on the hugging face up thanks to this, right? And if you need help, ping me, okay? All right, I'll put all the links in the video description. I hope this was uh, informative and uh, fun, who knows, for SEC filings. I'll see you soon with more content. Until next time, have fun, keep learning. Bye-bye.